Ah, oh, hello everybody. So good to see you. Welcome to this new moment, new time to question our thinking. Always a new chance to question our thinking as life moves. All right. So just sitting here quietly this morning, here's where my a book opened. This is from Loving What Is. So Katie says this in Making Friends with the Worst That Can Happen. I've helped people do the work on rape, war in Vietnam and Bosnia, torture, internment in Nazi concentration camps, the death of a child, and the prolonged pain of illnesses like cancer. Many of us think that it's not humanly possible to accept extreme experiences like these, much less meet them with unconditional love. But not only is that possible, it's our true nature. Nothing terrible has ever happened except in our thinking. Reality is always good even in situations that seem like nightmares. The story we tell is the nightmare that we have lived. When I say that the worst that can happen is a belief, I am being literal. The worst that can happen to you is your uninvestigated belief system. And I love what she's saying there. She's not speaking of denying that there's suffering. There certainly is. Or suggesting that we shouldn't be when we are. But saying you know, it's our true nature to meet the world with unconditional love. The mind has conditions, but our true nature, unconditional love, just imagine that is what is here already. welcomed. Notice you're welcome to this new moment. Already welcomed. Already welcomed. Even if your mind says you, you don't want to welcome what's been happening, what you're thinking, what's underway, those troubles, those people, not even the worst that can happen, but those apparently smaller things that don't seem to be so life-threatening. They're already welcomed. They've happened. And I love we just don't try to skip there. We just sit with our thinking, giving even our thoughts unconditional love. Welcome everybody. And just feel the welcome, the welcome of the moment. You are so welcomed. Everything you've ever experienced, whatever thoughts are going through your mind, here you are. So I love we start these first Fridays with diving in a little deeper to a moment in writing, so capturing our thoughts first, kind of manifest them on paper so we can see them, they're not so speedy quick. Judge your neighbor worksheet. And so we'll just see so first, as you notice all the welcoming that's going on <laughs> by just sitting, nothing to do, nothing to get. Nothing to be, 
nowhere to go. Watching the assessment the mind does of what's happened, what is. To see what bubbles up to the top, a condition, a person, a moment. And if your mind is like mine, it might be speedy flashing like you. Sometimes it, wow, where do I begin? Or if I'm even on that person, there's like <laughs> so many moments. It's okay to watch that slideshow happening very fast. And still allowing something like almost asking, asking your mind, your heart, what wants to be investigated? What condition? What person? What moment did I really have the volume turn up on? objection to reality. I object. You feel it inside. That's what happened. Oh. And just noticing. Just seeing how, how sweet that is in a way. <clears throat> the mind has this mind-heart connection, a sensor for what I'm saying I don't like, what worries me, what bothers me, upsets me. It's okay to watch all that. And see if you can find a moment, just letting it kind of come into view and there's no perfect moment. You know, I gotta get the right one it's just allowing it to come to the surface. Let's take a look. Maybe it's something that's woken you up at night, and maybe not. It doesn't have to be measured on how big or small. See that situation, that moment. Kind of a, a willingness to slow it down. Just stay still with that one a moment. That speedy slideshow of the mind. And slow it down. Sometimes there's a lot going on in that moment. We don't see until we look or like let it be there closer more still. And just see something happened there and the thing that I might even be very familiar with inside is a uh, little clench, a grip against what is, don't like it, uncomfortable. But let that, let the movie pause there. Like a still shot, and frame it. Be quiet in that moment. What would cause you know, this? There's something here that would invite not relaxing and we're not we're not thinking oh I should be relaxed every moment of my life no shoulds it's allowing that to show us and see that as, as best you can and sometimes it's yesterday and sometimes it's two years ago Sometimes it's all the way back to when you were eight years old. 
So sometimes memory is tricky. It's okay though. See it like you're looking best you can. And just notice. See what your environment is like there, where you're placed in reality, in that memory, and who else is there. What else is happening? Kind of look around. Notice there's the what's happening in the moment and meaning is being put on it immediately. Almost simultaneously. But it's a tiny bit after. And it's okay. We're welcoming the meaning that's being put on there by the mind. As you sit with that image, that picture, allowing that experience to be fully there, right, the Judge Your Neighbor Worksheet, and just know that this is your anchor place because you know, the mind will scamper all over the place and you might see more and have other examples, a lot of more awareness. Come back here as a as an anchor. This is my situation. Here's my situation, you know. Sometimes people like to even write the situation down. It's very shorthand, you know. I'm standing on my deck. It's starting to rain. All the furniture inside the house is on the deck. We need to get tarps. It's just what came to my mind. But just looking. Seems like such a benign situation. <laughs> but just notice, there I am. I'm experiencing sensation in the body. I see what people are around. I might even be sensing things that I can't see. Just okay to notice all that. Feelings. And I see where I am, looking at the environment. Gathering it all in there. Maybe something was just said, just happened right before. Volume got kind of turned up on this moment. And see if you can find a simple phrase that captures what you don't like about this moment, what you object to. I'm upset. In this moment, I'm upset with, you can even see what it is, and there might be several things. Just find, find one, and accept with that person, and accept with, I'm upset with this condition, I'm upset with money, I'm upset with at this place because and what comes after is listen. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Just listening. It might come out long. Sometimes if you let that mind go, it's just got a lot to say. Where do I even begin? I'm upset because. I'm upset. I 
like answering the question, why? And it's sweet to find simple, simple sentences and nothing's required. And just in case you're just getting here, just looking at that moment that we don't like and writing a judge your neighbor, I'm upset because you see it. And okay to even have something that replaces upset. All those beautiful words for feelings. Angry. Sad. And notice the, notice the feeling. Be a whole collection of feelings. Let's we'll see which one comes out strongest. Okay, number two, really looking at this situation. You gather all the ways the mind is communicating to you. How do you want what you're looking at to change? It can feel like a tantrum, a demand, begging. How do you want that to change? really don't like this. I want, I want that person to, and not looking at you're having a conversation between you and something else. There's a you here and something else. How do you want it to change? So many of us go straight to, I just need to be the one that changes. And there's some wisdom in that, but let's look at what it feels like it's outside of us or a part of us or not the whole of us that how do I want that to change. That condition, that person, that item, that place. This is simple. I want them to And if you really got to say what you really want without judgment or shame, I shouldn't want that. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's just the mind. Just let it be there. But the child part or the whoever it is talking, oh, but if that just was different, uh. <laughs> okay, now looking at this situation. What advice would you give what you're looking at so that 
this change can happen. Should, shouldn't, all of those shoulds. What would it take so that this thing that you want, how would it, how would it change? What would you recommend so that change could occur? What does this person need to do? Or this thing? It should, he should, they should, she should. It might be a shouldn't. That's okay too. Number four, I love this one. You know, we're asking ourselves, what would it take for me to be happy in this moment, in this situation? So without necessarily saying, the only thing that would make me happy is if it never happened. My love of mind comes up with that one. That's okay, too. <laughs> but now that it's happened, you know, there's this moment. What do you need from whatever it is you're looking at? What do you need from it? From, from life, from this condition, from the person? What do you need in order to be happy? Wow. Not just making it. Not just getting through it. But actually happy, whatever happy might look like in this, in the, your situation, peaceful, or relaxed, accepting, open, comfortable. So what do you need from them or it? I need Really see if you give yourself what you need. Sometimes we just give ourselves a little bit so that it's kind of manageable. But if you really got to say what you need in order to be, oh, okay, I'm good now with this moment, what would, what would happen? What would they say or do? Here's what I need. And it's okay to notice if you're not sure. <laughs> and you can have detail. This is a fun one for detail. I need them to say these words. If that happened, whoa. That'd be amazing. And it can be very simple, always simple. Really giving you what you need. Okay to focus on this one, your experience in this moment.
Number five, love this, you just, to just make a list in the situation, the thing I'm looking at is, and whatever fabulous qualities come to mind, just move into the most uncomfortable feeling, the one that's bringing you to this moment and this awareness, this investigation. So that person is, that condition is, and it's the stressful, whatever comes out, whatever you hear, just listen, your own words. Okay, K to B is, is judgy and non-PC and outrageous as the voice is. Make a list. It is, she is, in this situation, we know we're not saying for all time, just in this moment, that's the expression. And even okay if it's got opposite qualities in the moment. And finally, number six, I love this, get to have a big blanket statement. Mind loves that for all time. I don't ever want to experience what? What is it that you get to say that about here? I don't ever want to experience this again. What is it that you don't ever want to experience again? If it never, if you never, had to go through this again, ah, that'd be fantastic. I don't ever want. I don't ever. ever want to experience that again. This is gold, you know, it's the, doesn't look like it. <laughs> it's kind of like a pile of stuff that I'm not so happy with. But I love it because it's, it sort of sets it, sets it up a little, slows it down so beautifully makes it, gives words. I love the word like we, we, there's a word and it's made out of letters and we spell words. This is the spell that's cast. Right? It feels like it. This is our believing happening. But it's great because we can see in our language how it's communicated. And oh, so good because then we can answer the questions and come back if our mind kind of races off, come back. All right, so feel free, everyone, to use the chat. And let's just hear a couple of situations because sometimes just being able to share it. Here's my situation that I'm looking at, just very brief. This is what I wrote about. And you can share in the chat. And if you want, you can even come off mute. Yeah, perfect. Raise your hand, even just come off mute. But there's Diana. All right, Diana. Awesome. Hey, good morning. So where do we start? Uh, you want me to read the situation? 
Yes. Okay. I am mad with Elizabeth because she bought herself a studio and didn't offer any money. And she stayed with me so much time and used my home and family without giving anything back. I feel used, disappointed to have her in my life. So. Such a good moment. Yes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I love it. And it sounds like it's like you've got a like, little collection of all the times she's ever stayed with you. Plus the fact that something is like something raised the, turned up the volume on the stress. And she even bought something. Just bought this condo. She's got money. <laughs> yes. There is a learning that. Yeah. Good situation. Yes, she's got that and never offered, hasn't offered anything. Thank you, my dear. It's just or respecting the situation in a way. You know, there it is. Thank you. I love it. All right. Yeah, Marty. Um, my father, I, I came home from school once when I was little, well, like 11 or 12. And I said, I made a new friend today. And my father looked at me and said, well, they won't like you when they get to know you. Um, and that has rung through my brain for the rest of my life with all my relationships as if he was a prognosticator and he could see the future and it's like stamped. Okay, Marty, no one will ever like you. Uh, so, so good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rich vivid moment. Vivid moment. Thank you. Love it when the words are just ring, you know, there they are. Very powerful. Thank you. Anne. Yes. So this morning after the family reunion last weekend, uh, I got a, a, um, a video, a little video of what had happened. And, and then, and that was one thing. And then uh, one of my uncles text, um, sent an email saying, great video uh, and many blessings to your great career, to a great career or something like that, to this young man who had made the video, uh, the son of a cousin. Um, so my statement is, I'm disturbed by my family because they never gave me a blessing for a great career. Mm, oh, great one. Yeah. These are powerful. The ones where there's just an absence, an absence of what I want. It's, I see it from other people and I haven't gotten it. So good. Thank you, Anne. Yeah. Anyone else want to just put it out and I'll read um, another Anne. Um, can I talk? Yes. Hi, Lori. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I'm upset because um, we can't give our grandkids a gluten-free croissant and the kids are told that it's wrong that, um, you know, when you're with your grandparents, you have to say, no, you can't, you know, we were walking through the ferry building in San Francisco and did this. And then we find out that their mother had taken them to this restaurant for waffles that weren't even gluten-free. Um, when they come to our house last time, we were told there's severe consequences if they eat certain things or if I, I have, they're going to be third graders, they're going to be nine. I have a video game called um, Sneaky Sasquatch that they love to play. If they can't play that, they can't eat certain things, even though we have gluten-free vegan stuff all over the place here for them, but they can watch a long movie. So there's this manipulation, there's this control when the kids are in our care of what they're allowed to do. And there's going to be severe consequences from spending time with us. Mm. So I am upset <laughs> because we can't give the kids a gluten-free croissant but she can take them to a restaurant and give them waffles good good one good one yep you've got your target <laughs> who's the problem <laughs> it's good <laughs> thank you 
Okay. And the other Anne, I need her to understand me and talk to me and forgive me. And Sarah, I should be writing, dancing, playing piano, singing, connecting more with people around racism. Good one. My daughter's mother-in-law called Pat. So my daughter's mother-in-law called me regarding my daughter's anger and yelling at our grandchildren. Good one. Don't you love these? These are predicaments. I know you don't love them. Okay, share. I don't ever want to experience again the yucky feeling that someone that says they love me doesn't act like I am worthy of kind action. Yeah. Okay, so just noticing how powerful and okay to stay with it, being with it. All right. So it could be someone who just shared their situation or anyone who wants to do the work. Hey guys. Hey, Kelly. Hello. Hi. Yay, I'm using Zoom for the first time on my tablet. I'm so excited. Wow, good to see you, my dear. All right. Good to see you. So tell us your situation. Okay. So I was debating on whether or not to do it on one particular situation because I had one in mind, but my mind was like, nope, I want to do it on the whole category of men and sexual harassment. So that's what I want to do it on. Okay. <laughs> so okay. yeah, um, uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So <clears throat> I'm particularly, um, just particularly, just before I say the judge neighbor worksheet, I'm particularly angry about like sexual harassment that is not just words anymore, but like if I mean, I'm sure you, some of you women have also experienced this when a man like chases you down the street for like two or three blocks and nobody is doing anything and it seems like no one cares and I was being sexually harassed. So that's the anger that I'm going through. It's, it's kind of like linked to that moment, but I feel like I still need to say it as a whole because I've been I've I've been experiencing a lot of sexual harassment from men lately. Okay. Yeah. So I put number one, I'm furious with men for mistreating me and other women like sexual objects. Um, I demand men to treat me and other women equally with respect and to understand that we are equal as human beings who don't deserve to be mistreated. Number three, I wrote, men should treat me and other women with respect. Men should understand that women are not sexual objects. Men should understand that women are humans too, first and foremost. Number four, I need men to understand and really get that women need to be respected as human beings. I need men to stop sexually harassing me and other women. I need men to be honest with me. I need men to leave me alone. I need sexual predatory males to apologize to women. Men, number five, men are a major threat to women. Men are fucking assholes who can't catch a clue that sexual harassment is never okay. Men are ignorant of what it feels like to be sexual harassed, sexually harassed. Number six, I don't ever want to experience being chased down the fucking street by a sexual male predator. Mm. Oh, thank you. So honest. Okay. I heard respect, mm -hmm. disrespect, you know, mm -hmm. I want, I want their respect. <laughs> yeah. Respecting me. Yeah. And it has to do with other women too, because like, I feel like, you know, none of us deserve this. You know, I've, I've ended up like defending another woman. Like I was walking with another woman down the street in Oakland and like this guy out of nowhere just gets up and starts, you know, chatting with her and being like, oh, your eyelashes are so beautiful, girl. And I said, please get the fuck away from her. That was my reaction, like protective of other women. Yeah, yeah. You know? So very, I mean, helpful to notice that it doesn't seem to be personal, that it goes out mm -hmm. into the world and that's okay. Like just watching. Mm -hmm. I have examples. I have proof. Mm -hmm. Not just yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're disrespecting. Oh, I'm not going to make disrespecting me, disrespecting women. Okay, so find, and I might mute and unmute you just a little bit, Kelly. Yeah, but, you know. Um, so everybody find where in your situation, in a situation, may not be the one you just wrote about. There's somebody who's disrespecting you. 
And it's okay if it's not the same type of situation that it might be. Maybe that's, that comes up right now for, you know, wherever in your life. They're disrespecting you. This is definitely disrespect. You just look. And you get to follow along and just be with it. Okay. All right. So Kelly, in this situation, in the situation that you're picturing, and you can put mm -hmm. left and up, you know, maybe there's a whole, like a whole wall, a gallery. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're disrespecting you. Is it true? Yes, it's true. It's absolutely. Yes. Okay. Sometimes can be very helpful and just say it's all right. Yes. What happens? What happens when you think they're disrespecting me? Um, I hold on. I think I might need to go in a minute out of this patio because there's people who are not, in my opinion, respecting that I'm having this conversation and laughing. So I might need to leave in a second to go somewhere else. Okay. okay. But at the moment, like, yeah. Um, when I feel that they're disrespecting me, like I, it's like, I don't have the ability just to like notice what's going on in the moment like just be with what okay what's going on in the moment some male is chasing me okay maybe like i could go and walk into a store like i don't have that ability to like just think okay where could be my safety right like my i just go into pure full-blown fury and then it turns into extreme screaming in spanish because my furious language is spanish and i it's just like I just I, I just go off the walls with like what the fuck you know? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. It's like an explosion of a volcano, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, say just moving to safety or some quiet place doesn't seem mm -hmm. available to you when you're believing right. they're respecting me. All right. Mm -hmm. Now see the images. See how far back it goes. When did you first observe this? And it might be happening to somebody else not you, who knows? Mm -hmm. They disrespect oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I remember living in Costa Rica when I was 18 and I didn't experience getting chased, but I experienced a lot of, you know, cat calls and these sorts of things that happen a lot in Latin America. And, you know, it's like, yeah, you're just furious. You're just like, God, like you just, you just feel so like, I want you to feel like I feel like why, you know, it just, yeah, I don't know it's like it they turn into like the other like you are the other and then like I start I start like what I call um man bashing where I just put all men into a category of uh, fucking sexual predators when obviously not all of them are but it's just it's it's like I start like like being like oh the whole planet would be better off if fucking women run the world you know what I mean yes <laughs> I mean of course yes you see that mm -hmm. The collection, collection of it all. There they all are, They're all like that suspicion. Yeah. Okay. So just notice, I start putting them all in the category. So angry. All right. Just watching, we know exactly what it feels like. It's very alive. So others, I see. If anyone else wants to share, what happens when you think they are disrespecting me? Hi, I'm gonna feed you, honey bunny. And so, Lynn, situation is, I had to rewrite an article for my work because I was told there were readers who were big meat eaters and the article was suggesting that too much valuable water in an arid part of the country was gonna water, was going to water crops for cows and not people, got it. Thanks for sharing your situation. Okay. What happens when you think they're disrespecting me? So Pat, I feel helpless and ashamed. I feel like I have to agree to own it first so that she stops saying things. It feels very dangerous. It's 
okay if it's your personal situation. What happens when you think this is what disrespect looks like and it's happening? It's disrespect to me. Sarah, I feel confused, angry, controlled, ashamed, and wrong, like he might be right. Okay. I feel that rage. I'm afraid she's right and I'm bad. Notice it, you know, it depends on the situation. You've got your own answers. They're disrespecting me. Linda, I'm angry, like a martyr. I have to stick up for the downtrodden. Diana, I'm very upset. I feel helpless. I feel like I don't exist and the person can't see me. Okay. I think I deserve this because I've done it wrong. That's a powerful one. Yeah, what did I do? <laughs> How come this is happening? What's going on? And just the urge to blame. Find who, find who did it wrong. Okay. All right, Kelly, anything more? Describe this. Um, yeah, I guess like there's a little thing in my head that's like, you know, I, I can do the work and I've done the work for a lot of times when it comes to men and sexual harassment. But, and it's like, I guess I want, I like, I want things to actually change. Like maybe I'm not, um, I, I think I need to get into like some real turnarounds and live them, you know, cause I'm just like, I really want change on this planet for women because I feel like, yes, I get it that it's, you know, our thoughts and, but it's, 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 but it's, it's freaking real. Like racism is real and men being sexual predators towards women is real. And I want a real change on this planet. And I, you know, like, yeah. No, okay, just noticing, I want that. I've observed it. It's not just with me out there. And we're not, by doing the work, questioning, you know, we don't have to throw it all out or pretend it isn't what we see. Okay. All right. So share, I feel stuck in a terrible lift, unhappy, devalued in day-to-day -day life. And Anne, I wish she could see, you know, we wish they could, they could see how it feels from inside me. It feels like there's no way to explain. I feel misunderstood. If only she could feel it, then she'd understand. And there's no way to make her understand. So I feel trapped. Yeah. Yeah. Lynn, when they disrespect me, I cease feeling safe with who I am. I create a facade and to distance myself emotionally. I try to That for yeah. them to like me, I try to make an excuse to get away. I'm annoyed. They can't get the point of no. They they can't get the point of no. Mm -hmm. Am I okay in this instance? Yes. I'm just so annoyed. Okay. All right. So letting that anger be there. You know, we're not trying to get rid of it. It's just noticing what's what's stressful for me. All right. And Sarah, I lose myself and the ability to think well in that moment. I think you were saying that at the very beginning, Kelly. I should be so afraid. Right? I shouldn't be so afraid right now. All right. So Kelly, right there in the situation, just notice. Noticing the picture, the one you're looking at, and then others. Here it comes. Who would you be without the thought, without denial, without the thought, they're disrespecting me? Disrespecting. Um, well, I think that without the thought, um, I would, um, 
I guess. I mean, I don't, this is so hard for me without the thought they're disrespecting me. I think I would still be really angry about, you know, someone chasing me down the street, but maybe I would, if I didn't have the thought, I could be able to think clearly and be like, okay, this situation, I'm not liking being chased down the street. So maybe I could, as I said before, like go and turn into a store if that's available. Um, And uh, I, I would, I don't, I don't know. This is, I, I can't imagine not having, because when I, when I'm, when I am sexually harassed, like I don't actually have the thought, oh, they're disrespecting me. I have, like, I have just a bodily reaction that's like, fuck off, yeah. you know? So, uh, so yeah. my, I guess my fuck off is a sense of you're disrespecting me. Um, I, I think I'd be more clear and I would also you know, do whatever I needed to do in that moment uh, to stop the harassment. And, you know, for me, it's come to the point where I want to buy some mace and I want to buy, I want, I want to buy some mace to potentially just protect notice. myself. Cause, just yeah. Notice. You don't have to go into Sorry. knowing what to do yet. Okay. okay. No, don't it's, do like, it. okay. it's like the moment yeah. to manage, like, here, I'm going to do it. Uh, how I'm going to do it from now on into the future or what I would do instead after if I didn't have the thought and we're just okay. finding the feeling mm-hmm. of it not being personal and also not in denial okay not in denial okay yeah I would be more clear I think I would just be very clear like like be with the fact of the situation I'm being chased yeah. don't right. want that find dope. just don't want that okay now be clear about where I can go to potentially not be chased well, notice all the fear, rage, I uh, think, like right behind all that rage, I've always mm-hmm. found is a lot of fear, which okay. makes sense. Okay, and okay. we're not saying nobody's chasing you and nothing, you know, but it's like, okay, there they are. Mm-hmm. And I have so much fear. I feel incredible. Like there's that, you know, feels like a atom bomb explosion. Like you see those and that going outward, like as a protection. So that's what's yeah. the that's happening. Okay. I notice I'm afraid. So let's just look and say, we're not pretending it isn't happening. We're not in any kind of denial. We're just sitting, being still and noticing what it feels like if I'm not in so much danger, like just noticing Mm -hmm. if I'm not, I'm just willing to be there because what's happening, I'm, I'm there. Mm -hmm. I love that in the question three still linda shared in that moment i'm willing to resort to violence right Mm -hmm. i could punch my sister who i love right in the face Mm -hmm. so good my brain melts down there's no way to defend myself okay so without the thought staying with myself answer i get out of danger and i calm the fear i mean just look look at this chasing person there's a person chasing you Oh. In a way like you can turn as if you imagine turning and kind of really looking at them because it feels frightening to be chased. But just look without the thought that this is fundamentally dangerous. And it doesn't mean we're not going to get into the store or whatever happens, but we don't have to even know what happens next. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean we wouldn't carry mace. And it doesn't mean, you know, just noticing who would I be without my whole story on it? Mm-hmm. My whole story. Mm-hmm. I will be present. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Isn't that it's amazing? A present. I'd be it'd be different. I bring it all in. I hear the I see the words. I see the person coming. I hear the cat call or you know, whatever. And just noticing that experience, present, present. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Pat says, I can see and think, I can notice, have my own opinion. No one is really in danger right now. So she's saying in that situation, these are just words and opinions that is powerful to notice. And, but even in a situation where somebody has actually physically grabbed, 
or mm -hmm. more. It, you can still do this work, but notice in your situation that pla those places that we think of as proof, just to see without the thought, it is absolutely dangerous in the way that I believe that it's dangerous. If I didn't have that story all the way back to when I first got started collecting the proof too. Sometimes there's a lot and I hear you. A lot of evidence. Hmm. Cher says, I wouldn't feel a need to demand good treatment. That's, that's powerful. It's like, who are we asking for respect? I mean, just good to notice. Mm -hmm. And Anne, I'd find a safe place to admit that I'm scared and sad. I'd be vulnerable and let it move through. I maybe do some shaking to get it out of my body. I'd look at what's mine and what's not. Even just being willing to have a, an awareness of the safety in the moment. Physical body might not be so safe depending on your situation. I mean, I find this amazing to do with something where you actually are physically, you've physically been hurt. But even there, this willing to sit with, who would I be with, without the story, the whole story. And Cher is sharing, there, there'd be no need for anger, you know, not such anger. And, you know, I hear Kelly, if you've got it, what's the reality? The anger's present. Angry is a, anger is sometimes such a, a boundary maker. And, and noticing, even if I didn't have that boundary maker needed to come in, sometimes it's just a, just a look, voice, sound, nobody touched me just to see, you know, in my situation. If somebody touched me, how long did it last? Then it was over. The mind will stay on the bad moment repeatedly. And Anne, I get to choose what I do and feel. I would have a feeling of some power. That's a good one. Often this anger comes in, it's like uh, I'm, make, I'm drawing a line I feel no power. I feel powerless in this moment and I'm so upset about it. So who would I be without that thought? Respect would keep me safer. Respect would bring me a sense of power. Without the thought, there is no power. Without the thought, there is no safety possible here. Linda, I'd connect to my inner child and feel the grief of needs not being met. That's very sweet. And Sarah, I'd be able to do the work around the situation in this world. I would not be all caught up in my confusion and emotions. My thinking could be helpful. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it's just being with it being with it. So turned around. Am I disrespecting myself in that moment? And just see without attack to yourself of any kind, but am I seeing myself as less than powerless in the situation? Any example? Am I looking at myself disrespectfully, without respect? Um, I don't. I don't really know because I feel like I am. Like I feel that the anger, like it is a form of. For me, it is a form of respect. It is a form of like, hey, like I have boundaries. I I know my value as a human being. It's like, 
I guess I conceive of the anger as like respecting myself, just protect myself, you know? So I don't, I don't know how I would be disrespecting myself. Yeah. So it's a good one. It's like seeing, okay, that, that wouldn't be an example because it doesn't fit. It's like, yeah, that's something rising up saying, hmm. And all it is is seeing in any place. I, mean, I don't know if you can find this. I could find I'm, I'm throwing out my own sense of safety in this moment or that I am powerful in this moment. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm letting them, I'm letting them have my the power, like a, a threat. And yeah. it, doesn't mean, it doesn't mean no threat is happening, you know, to the mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm letting them kind of run my peace of mind here in this moment. Just a, a yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Because I am afraid, you know, I'm afraid of what could happen here. Uh -huh. Even though it's not happening. So my thinking, my thinking isn't respecting me as much. And uh, Diana, I would see that the other person might not even know they disrespect me. Share. I might remember that some people care about me even if this person is not acting respectfully. Uh, Linda, I abandoned myself when I believed I needed anything from her. Powerful. Yeah. I mean, kind of awareness of this. What's the reality? I'm not experiencing respect in the moment. And who's the only one I can get respect from for sure in the moment? Myself. Mm -hmm. And it's just to see. Okay. I can also find I may not be respecting my own fear. I'm actually afraid and I'm against, I don't like that I'm being threatened here. I'm against it. Uh, and just to let it be, you know, like, like, let it be that I'm, wow, I'm in a situation that is, is threatening. So I'd like to get to higher ground or safety or shelter or something and just move that way, just move that way instead mm -hmm. of attacking the thing that is the problem. Isn't it interesting if like, if there was a tornado coming down the street, uh, you would just go to the shop, you know, you'd find the safety. Yeah. You wouldn't say, God damn, there goes a tornado again, being such an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Even though every time. <laughs> damn the tornado. <laughs> yeah. Even though yeah. I'm pretty sure tornadoes usually are themselves and they aren't like friendly and yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. they're, but isn't it interesting that we don't like hate them and attack them for all time and think they're never nice to people? Like, what is the, what's, what the hell? And uh, we just move away from them, move away. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's turn it around to the other. I'm not respecting them. This is very interesting. What, this respect that's missing, am I doing it towards them? Like, What would respect look like and am I not doing it? Um. I'm not respecting them. Well, I think it's like, this is a weird one, I guess, for me to say, but like, I'm not respecting them in the sense that like they, even though I don't like them, they, oh, 
on they have a right to exist too and maybe and i have to ha add something to this and maybe the fact that they exist and they have a right to exist too even even as they are chasing me down the street maybe that's okay because it can fuel me to say hey look they have a right to exist too and be how they are. I don't like it. And it fuels me to make a change somehow for women on this planet. This thing I don't like is fueling me to go positive. What can I do positively to make a change about this thing I don't like in the world called male sexual predators? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I just see this thing and I just am screaming no. Like all my energy is no. And I don't, I disrespect what's happening here because I'm, I don't kind of see this is something I really care about and I don't want predators and I don't want a predator feeling and mm -hmm. I feel powerless and I'm not respecting them. I mean, I can find, let's see, let's see what some others say. I disrespected her when I didn't truthfully express my feeling of hurt. I'm not respecting that this is who they are, like respecting a wasp's nest by not poking it. Wasps are just being wasps. Hmm. Yeah, there they are being themselves. And I'm full of like, I hate it. I hate it. Mm -hmm. And that bothers me more than anyone else. I'm, I start to suffer. Mm -hmm. And Linda, I didn't respect the causes and conditions that created that kind of behavior over there she wasn't born that way yeah they weren't born that way that's a good one i'm not respecting tornadoes being tornadoes i have a friend who is a naturalist and anthropologist who says that the problem with teenagers today is the lack of large predator predators <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes so Yeah, you could just find it. I'm not respecting uh, the way, the pair of glasses that they have on. And mm -hmm. maybe many of them are wearing the same glasses. And I might not, I might not like it. But I'm not respecting that it's possible. They might want to see it a different way too. I mean, who knows? Mm, that's true. I, that's, yeah. I can see that. I even have a, an example, which I won't go into, but I do have an example of a man that I ended up talking to who I saw ab abusing a woman in the street, not like actually physically, but screaming at her. And I stood up for this woman calmly and he was like, what? Yeah. Wow. That's a good example like that. I mean, if you look at those people, do they look happy? Do they look like they're getting what they want or like they're connecting with who they really want to connect with? Yeah. Like, doesn't really look like that. You know, like what they're doing is trying to connect perhaps or whatever, whatever they're doing. And um, it doesn't seem to work, right? It's not working. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not respecting something over there. And it doesn't mean I should do anything different in the moment, you know, or I need to drop my preferences. It's okay. It's just, yeah. It's just finding, it's finding the way, I'm not respecting that over there. Okay. And, and I do like this, just underlying it in a way, we kind of just said it, but at least I can find it. I'm not respecting all their conditioning that brings them to this moment where that's the way they see things. They mm -hmm. might want to be different if they, had another way, just like us. We, we want to see it differently also. Yeah. We'd like it to be different too. Who knows, they could. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Share says, and in the back, the I will back support to uh, respond to the situation. Yeah. That's how I can maintain some power in my life. I don't even know where I got, it. oh, I got it in Long mm -hmm. Beach at a Stanford store in Long Beach. So, it's so cute, but let's just see the opposite. They aren't disrespecting me. 
So even though they're saying what they're saying, doing what they're doing, being the way they are, can I find any way that that is not lack of respect for me? Could even be they're disrespecting themselves, for all we know. Let's just see. So Anne says, they may feel no other choice internally, sad as that is. Maybe you are providing them an opportunity to learn a new way. It's possible. Yeah. And Linda, she's feeling hurt too. So that person over there is feeling hurt too. Trying to protect herself, stick up for herself. Megan, maybe he is telling me some valuable information if I could be open to hear it. That's, that's a very, very interesting, it's helpful. And Pat, she was asking me for help. Just to see. I also like just noticing I'm a stranger, you know, in your situation, Kelly, I'm a stranger. So they may not be disrespecting me at all. And even if I look like a female person on this planet, they may not be disrespecting that. They may actually be wishing they could be closer to that. I mean, I can find that, you know, and not knowing how. It's possible. It could be just as true. And the original is also a could be. It could be that it's as terrible as I think, but we don't know for sure. Yeah, Diana. I just want to say that I know I being from a Latin American country, being raised there, um, not everybody was trying to harass you. They were actually trying to pay you a compliment. So it's it's how you take it. Um, you can either say, wow, I'm flattered or run away. But it it's how your mind goes one way or the other. So if you stay in your business, you'll be happy. If you look at them and say, they're in their business doing whatever they're doing, obviously not following you and all that, because that could be serious, but Latins like to give compliments out in the street. <laughs> That's what they do. And then it's their business, right? <laughs> so I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> um, it's just the way I saw it. I never saw it like I was being harassed. Um, it's good to see it's possible to have a different pair of glasses on and just see that that's the conditioning maybe for generations. That's what we do here. You know, that's what they do in this. Um, and if I'm not, if I, if it scares me, you know, like Kelly, you're so scared and upset, say, um, let me just get to have, play around with it being a different way, being able to communicate. You know, when you do that, I get that you're seeing something over here, but it frightens me. It's not really working for me over here. <laughs> and maybe he has seen something so beautiful he can't let it pass by without comment. He doesn't realize his actions are scary and disconnecting rather than connecting. And share. She is exploring where she has some control in her life, and it's not all, at all about being cruel toward me. Sarah, it may be his way of saying that he likes me. Now, sometimes it's I'm the one that they're seeing as somebody who's powerful enough to hear this. I'm the one who they believe is okay with this. And maybe I'm even the one who could share otherwise, you know, and kindly with a lot of strength. Imagine this role play of like going up and going, huh, it's really interesting the way you're saying that and what, what you're doing. It kind of, I find it a little disturbing or a lot disturbing. It's like, what is it that you, 
I'd like to know what's going on in your mind over there. <laughs> Just imagining it. But Lauren, I hear you, but I feel disrespected with your words. Have a nice day. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this isn't really working for me <laughs> yeah. yeah and just simply noticing you know simply noticing being seen being in the spotlight being conditioned as the one who can see who's the seer who can look over there and make a comment about it. I could be the seer too. I could make a comment. I could speak. And I'm curious to know what you were hoping to get out of this interaction. <laughs> yeah. And Linda, I am all that, all that, aren't I? I agree, thanks for noticing. <laughs> which is fun. This is a fun way to find living turnarounds. Like not, we're not suppressing anything. We're really being, you know, respecting our own sense of threat and aware that I can question everything that's going on here in this moment. The assumptions that I'm making that bother me, that make me feel disconnected. And Lauren, I have a Latino landscaper. He calls me Senora Bonita. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> so, anything more there for anyone else? Kelly, any other examples? No, they're not actually disrespecting me. And Definitely, we're never, we're just finding the tiniest little examples, not, you know, not something that isn't true for us. Hang on. Oh, oh I got it. Um, I'm trying to just be with what you said and also with what, um, I forgot her name, the woman from Latin America said about, you know, Latin American people, like I've had an issue with that because I used to live in Latin America and Spain and things. And like, I get it and on somehow in their head, they see it as a compliment. But for me, it's, and other women I've talked to, even like, you know, a lot of my Latina friends, you know, Spain and Latin America, they hate it. They absolutely hate it. And I'm like, I already, I just want to, maybe this is just a let go for me. I just want to scream like, déjame ya putos cabrones, you know, leave me the fuck alone, you assholes. Like, like I, it's going to be hard for me to like live this turnaround of like considering that in their head it's a compliment when in my mind I'm like I already know I'm gorgeous like <laughs> like how do I just like I don't need someone to tell me that I'm gorgeous to already know that I'm really gorgeous like I just, well, you feel just like let it be a let it be a beginning you know a beginning just noticing yeah. noticing mm -hmm. noticing the the uh all we're caring about in many ways is my experience. I know that I'm upset. And so yeah. is there any way with my this creative, brilliant mind, okay. instead of just looking for proof about how, what an asshole they are, I might yeah. find new ways. You gotta turn around, mama. Turn it, turn the energy back. I know it feels like the energy is coming at us and being yeah. told what I, what, what they see and being mm -hmm. told seen here on, and I can could I turn that energy back so that they're in some spot over there like I see you seeing me so and I just want you to know that or whatever whatever it looks like a new, uh, a new way to okay. yeah yeah. I think it's going to have to be one that like I, I'm going to have to work on. I'm going to have to like really like breathe and pause the moment yeah. and just be like, okay, they, they are the way they are. They're not the yeah. way they're not. This is the fact. And now how like, I mean, I love like yeah. what people were saying too. It's like, like, I want to feel powerful in the situation and I want to feel powerful, not by necessarily like lashing out, but just being like present. And maybe I could come up with something beautiful and witty to be like, check yourself. 
Exactly. You know, yeah. you're like people have their conditioning and I have my conditioning and I'm just mm. rising up with, um, you know, attack. And I, mm. it, and I'm noticing that when I attack, things don't change. Right, right. Changes. Mm -hmm. and I'm interested mm -hmm. in, I'm interested in, in shifting something. You know? I mean, yes. Shifting. Yes. So, you know, if we weren't interested, it's okay. Keep you at war. But I know it's more fun not to be at war. Yeah. And it's like, ooh, I have a little challenge here going on. Like this is could be kind of exciting, especially if I'm some re, you know, moving and re something is repeating itself. There's maybe a calling for me here. If this thing is repeating itself, ah, I'm in a like, can we bring something to this that I haven't thought of either because of my own conditioning? I'm in my reaction and I haven't, I just go, the mind loves to just find proof about why this is, why they're assholes, why this is bad. But maybe there's another way. Maybe there's another way. And all that is, is being willing. I'm just willing. I don't have to know the other way yet, right? I love that the work isn't saying demanding that you find the way it's going to be different. Everyone looking today, it's like, there's that experience. Okay, it happened. It happened. And now, what if it could be another way? What if I was a, in this question four, you know, an angel from another planet that landed here, and I have a um, you know, tremendous amount of solid, peaceful, very empowering sense of uh, you know just compassion and openness and safety how might that look and humor humor how how might that look or like a leadership in my own you know just a just a sense of rooted leading what might that look like and who knows who knows what it might look like because there they are doing what they do so here kelly says oh, i love that grace uh, when you do that it frightens me <laughs> yeah. not that it would always be appropriate and i've noticed that with my sons at times when the testosterone was kicking in i would share that certain behaviors frightened me and they would be surprised and i often noticed a shift that this could be respectful to us all. Yeah. And, and it sounds like you agree with them that you are gorgeous and worthy. <laughs> yes. Share eye contact. I'm not wanting feedback today. <laughs> Love that. I'm not really wanting feedback today. <laughs> I notice that with my landscaper, if I start to feel uncomfortable, that it is my thinking and always is. I am safe. I'm okay. What past things are coming up? It really has nothing to do with him or anyone else. Thanks for this. I was late, but definitely really good to hear. And Anne, setting boundaries, humor, appreciation, or whatever I choose is okay. Yeah. And often in this, in this kind of moment, when there's somebody coming at us saying something, we think we have to receive, like take it right into the whole, like it's, like it's, the truth, instead of sort of looking back over there and going, huh, curiosity, like, what are you doing? You know, back. So setting boundaries can just feel like energy looking back, like, oh, when you said that, wow, that hurts. It feels scary. Setting boundaries, humor, appreciation, or whatever I choose is okay. And with physical chasing and boundary crossing, mace and self-defense skills seem appropriate. Just sure, you know, totally fine. And Sarah, this is so helpful because I've hated my very first boyfriend for sexually exploiting me. And now I can see that he was just acting just the way his four older brothers did. Banter may work too, if you can find it. Yeah. We can wish that we weren't in that situation, but there we are. How do I know you can handle it? You're in the situation. How I know you're the one, you are the one. 
And Linda, I can choose to return the gift. <laughs> hey, muchacho, thank you. Nice biceps, guapo. <laughs> yes. So anyone want to share what they found? We just went sinking into that one. Were you looking at your own situation where you noticed a uh, lack of respect? Do you want to share anything with Kelly or of your own experience in that inquiry? Very powerful. You can even share if you had your, a situation you were looking at. I love that people were finding their own, like somebody talking to a sister or she or whoever. Might be different, just watching that common thought of lack of respect. And just noticing we like ourselves better when it, we're, we're responding differently. And that's, that's the thing that matters. I'm a victim when what they do changes my moment to something uncomfortable. And okay that it has, totally okay. Don't know any other way. I'm interested in another way. And I'm, I wanna find out what it's like. I don't know what it's gonna be like yet. Sarah, I can feel the shift when I find humor in the situation and share. I had some insights into being more respectful toward the person and that she is exploring where she has control. And it's not at all about being cruel to me. Beautiful. And Pat, it's so obviously impersonal. It has nothing to do with me, really. Good one. Wonderful. Such a good one. Thank you, Kelly, my dear. Yeah. So good. Diana saying this was great. Thank you, Grace, Kelly, and everyone. It was awesome. Bye, Diana. Beautiful. Go out and like live, you know, respecting re re the energy of respect. That's a great living turnaround. If I brought respect, empowerment to the situation, willing to stand there, even though some part of me is nervous, not all of me is unconditional unconditional openness to this moment interested yeah i can be the uh, laser beam of light that helps something shift just for one person uh, me most of all <laughs> all right lots of love everybody thank you enjoy yourselves you can take yourself off mute to say goodbye love to hear your voices Bye bye, everybody. Have a good bye. weekend. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Kelly, that bye. was fabulous. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.